Yeah, this is actually one of my locations. And Victor here tried to come in and try to take it. Yeah, so, see the grind don't stop, man. That's Team CV, Victor here with Celebrating Victories, giving you guys another video. And in today's video, I'm gonna talk about how I walked into a barber shop that just opened up. I went in there to talk to a business owner to try to get my ATM in there. And as I'm walking in, I look to my right and I see an ATM there and I see someone with the door open, filling it up, refilling the ATM, doing their thing. They turn around, they look at me and they's like, hey, Victor, I know who you are. You from YouTube. You ain't gonna come in here and steal my location. Get out of here, man. Shout out to David. I'm gonna talk about the experience I had walking into that business and meeting David for the first time. So y'all stay tuned. And check this out. This is my man, David. So I came into this barbershop right here to try to try to get an ATM in here. And when I came in, I ran into my man, David. He has his own ATM. He's a subscriber to the Team Celebrating Victories squad. So I wanted to introduce y'all to him because he has a he has his own business, obviously, and then you have your own YouTube channel. Yeah. So yeah. make sure y'all check that out. What's the what's the YouTube? It's just my name, David O. Gutierrez, and I do feel I teach just like that. I teach ATMs how to get ATMs in. I also have online businesses and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, this is actually one of my locations. And Victor here tried to come in and try to take it. Yeah. So, see the grind don't but, stop, man. That's, that's cool, what man. I'm talking about. I appreciate bro. it. So I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, man. So um, I saw you cleaning it. Where did you learn that from? Uh, as far as oh, just cleaning in general. Yeah. Oh, honestly, from you, man. Yeah. From see, you. that's what I'm talking so, about. So y'all do used, what I tell you. Yeah. He Go actually to... does the spray. I do the wipes. I use my little Clorox wipes and stuff like that. But yep. yeah, no, gotta keep them clean. Yeah, Disinfect. Sure, gotta man. keep them clean. That's so dope. So um, yeah. So how long you been doing this? So I've been in the ATM. So I actually started off with little candy machines, the little 25 cent little gumballs and stuff. Okay. And I sold that, and I used that money to buy my ATM. And then from there, you know, use that and buy continue more. But yeah, I've been man. doing this for two years now. Two years. Wow. Two look, years. At that. look at that. How so, many ATMs you got now? Right now, I got five. Cool. They're actually all in barbershops. Nice. The barbershops are good. Yeah. Check out the barbershops, guys. They're all in one barbershop. So you have any um, upcoming ATMs that are coming in? Or are you looking for a new spot? Uh, as of right now, I'm not looking right now. But of course, you know, if I walk in or anywhere else, if there's anything open, you know, yeah, man, I'm trying to get sure. on them. So, cool. but all right, man. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm, hell, I'm Heli ATM. So my logo's on the other side of the ATM. Okay. But um, I'm Heli ATMs around here, and yeah, man, just you man, know, keep just grinding, hustle, bro. Just hustle, keep grinding. So. It's so good to I meet you, it. man. I appreciate so, it. All hey. Out. Y'all stay tuned. I'll give you guys some more information. But um, yeah, follow the videos. Make sure you guys are implementing. Right, really, 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 just implementing. For sure. That's yep. it. Just That's doing it. it. Everything's out there. All the information is out there. Do your, your research. Do your due diligence. And get out there. Talk to business owners and do what you got to do. So yeah, you see, you were saying you have Kim's Barbershop. So I got another barbershop or another location just on this side over here. So I'm going to go and fill this guy up. Okay. And then, you know, just kind of do my rounds here. Yeah. But I was telling Victor, when I first started this whole ATM business, I obviously didn't know how to talk to, um, you know, to store owners, the business owners, how to get an ATM or anything like that. So what I did was I actually paid for like a locator mm -hmm. to help me start off. So you can learn. And, yep. And then that's how I started getting into the actual thing. And then when I learned, you know, started learning more about ATMs, people and started watching more youtube videos and stuff like that that's how i started actually you know learning how to talk to customers how to get it out there kind of thing you know just so when you say locators that's someone like a like someone to find a location yep. for you yep. okay so they're kind of doing the talk and they're doing their pitch and then they're basically you're yeah giving I, them a fee you're giving them yep. a referral they're fee. basically i'm basically paying and they send me locations hey this guy's interested go check it out go give them some more information and if they like it i'll get it in i'll probably put an atm or whatever and not right what's the um referral fee look like so right now where i was paying was four hundred dollars for, for a location, location. but okay. it's kind of sucky because like i said i just started off i didn't know what a good location would be yeah. so the first place i would said yes i threw it in there so and gave you do four hundred dollars and then you're like oh yep. yeah so, so four hundred dollars is a lot for a finder's fee guys and then one thing that you can do, or if you, if you still continue doing this, this is something you guys could do too. If you are, um, if you're referring, you know, people to go look for ATMs for you and you're paying them, you know, say it's a hundred bucks, give them a hundred bucks, but tell them, hey, if I put a location in there and it's gonna be there and it's there for more than three months, then I'll give you the hundred dollars. That way you're not, you're not finding like a crappy location. You're putting an ATM in there, you're giving them $400 or even $100 and then that's you're true. removing it after a week or, or a month or two months, whatever the case is. So that's something you guys can learn from David and um, 
Yeah, man. So, um, what does a typical day look like for you? Are you mostly throwing ATMs, or are you just kind of? So, my full time job, I'm an EMS helicopter pilot. So nice. I work, I work out of town. So, right before I leave or whatever, I fill them all up. You know, let them sit for about a week, depending on my schedule, or whatever. But I fill them up. It takes probably about maybe two and a half, three hours to do everything from start to finish. So it's really not too bad, yeah. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, I've only had I only have five ATMs right now, so it's not like a huge thing where it takes me all day. But mm -hmm. about two, three hours, go to the bank, take the money out, cash and clean them. You know, make sure everything's working. Paper. How long do you think it takes uh, to fill one ATM up? And, Honestly, and, and your, I mean, your process. Three minutes, five minutes. Yeah, it's you know fast. what I mean. It's quick. Yep. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's, it's it's pretty simple once you start getting a hold of it once you start knowing how it works what to do with the process it goes a lot easier so you said you have four or five barbershops five. All, five. all your stuff all your uh all your atms are barbershops yep. okay yep. have you ever pitched to other locations other than barbershops yeah yep. yeah so when i first started i had a buddy like i said i first started off with a locator mm -hmm. and i had i tried it in liquor stores i tried it in a gun shop um, but all of this actually started in COVID. So, gotcha. you know what I mean? So, Timing was bad. Yep. Yeah. So I started when the whole COVID thing started two years ago. So I'm like, I left them there for a little bit. Ah, you know, COVID, after COVID, it's going to start picking up. Well, yeah. it never did. Yeah. But um, I tried, I've done barbershops. I've done a restaurant. I've tried uh, gun shops. And um, yeah, so. Um, how many, um, have you moved ATMs before? Oh, I'm yeah. assuming you so moved that's them. <laughs> how many how many times did you move an ATM because a, a lot of people they get under the impression that they put an ATM in a location no. and it's gonna stay there forever and it's gonna make four or five hundred dollars you know and everything's gonna be good no you no. gotta move them right how many I've, times did you move I've them? moved them I man I'm I, I feel like I'm like a pro at just moving them back and forth but honestly I've probably done maybe seven or eight moves yeah you know yeah, from yeah. nail salons to like the barber shops, all those yeah. other ones, um, the gun shops. Mm -hmm. So I've I've moved them, yeah. And yeah. that's the key. That's just the key on this thing, you know. I mean, it's basically just kind of checking it out, testing it. You know, I like to leave them in there between ninety days to six months, depending on what it's doing. And yeah. then that's when I start making my decision. Okay, I got to move them or whatever kind of thing. Yeah, that makes sense. So. And that's part of the grind. It's like something inevitably you're gonna deal with, yeah. because it's not just I'm gonna find my first location. And it's gonna be a money spot, and you're gonna generate six, seven hundred, nine hundred, a thousand dollars. It ain't gonna happen. You might, you might, if you get super lucky, right? Oh, yeah. But you're gonna probably have to put two or three in, see what it is, move one, keep other, keep the two, move all three, whatever. All yeah. right, that's part of the grind. Yeah. Um, yeah, Davey, so. do you have any questions for me? Um, not really questions. You know, like you've actually answered a lot of them. I like, yeah, yeah. I like your, I really like your videos that you actually go and answer questions or whatever. The Q and A's, you know? yeah. yeah. The Q and A's. I like okay. those. I mean, a lot of them are people, you know, starting learning how to start, yeah, how yeah. to put an ATM and stuff like that. But you know, it always comes that one or two questions that, like, oh yeah, that's right, kind of yeah. thing. So, if there was one thing that you can tell yourself when you first started, from now till then, if you can go back and say, hey man. You know, David, don't do this, or David, do this. What would that one thing be? Uh, as far as like the ATMs? Yeah. Do your homework. That was my thing. Like I said, like I was saying, I paid somebody to get a location, and the first person that said yes, I put an ATM, but I didn't really do my location. You know, how many chairs are in a barbershop? How much traffic goes in here? How much uh, commissions or the owner share they want, kind yep. of thing? The numbers. Definitely. You gotta run your, the numbers. Do your homework, you know? So that was my biggest thing, because I just wanted to get one in there, and I thought, and I assumed I'll make $500, $1,000, or whatever, but definitely do your homework, and that's kind of one thing you know but i learned the hard way and it's one of those where i learned just keep moving forward kind of thing yeah and so. to piggyback off of that so uh, for me personally the bare minimal that i want to make off of one atm any atm is going to be 200 dollars. so you have to back plan that if my if i want to make 200 dollars i have to be aware of how many how much i'm giving the business owner if i'm giving them a dollar per transaction and what and my surcharge is three dollars and you guys do the math. I'm not. I'm not a, a, a math whiz. I need to sit down there and use a piece of paper and write this stuff down. About 33 percent that you're giving them. Yeah. So you have to be aware of that. You have to do your calculations. Go through your expenses as far as like your your internet modems and all that stuff. Whatever. You know. Uh, I mean, you put like Lysol or you, in your case, you got the wipes. Mm -hmm. You know, those cost a couple of dollars, and that's gonna last you a, you know a while. 
but the whole point is run your numbers make sure that the numbers match and make sure you make whatever your minimum is going to be for me the absolute bare minimum for me to keep an atm is me profiting in my pocket two hundred dollars anything above that is is good you know three four five that's really good you know a thousand that's great okay so yeah we'll leave it there david man i I really appreciate you taking the time and talking with me, chopping it, it up, it, and running man. into you, man. It. And so, then, um, it's actually this guy right here showed me a lot. Like it's like the little things, you know. So once you get into that business, you start learning. Yeah, so, for sure. All right, guys. Well, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Be sure to like this video. Be sure to go check out David. I'm gonna try to find it, man. If you can shoot me a text with, it, I'll give you my number. For shoot sure. me a text with your with your um, channel. That way, I can add it in the video description. All right, you guys. So as soon as I walked out the business, out of the barbershop, you know, I looked around. I looked for David's car. I took my knife. I always carry a knife on me. I always stay with a knife, and I always stay um, concealed carrying. So I took my knife. I went to his car, and I slid all his tires up. And then the air just came out and his car just went down. He came out yelling, what you doing, Victor? I thought you was cool, man. I'm watching all your videos. What's going on? Why are you doing that? No, I'm just playing. I didn't do any of that. I didn't do any of that. But I do want to talk about dealing with competition. All right, shout out to David. David's local in my area. He is my competition. But just because he's my competition doesn't mean you don't show respect. It doesn't mean that you do anything sleazy. All it means is you just hustle harder. All right, so David, I'm out here. I'm gonna hustle harder than you, bro. And everybody else in my local area, I'm gonna hustle harder than you. But I want you guys to hustle hard too. So when you're dealing with competition, the only thing you gotta do is, you know, remain, you know, consistent with what you're doing. Fill up your ATMs, talk to business owners, move more. The more water you fill into your, you know, into your business, the more, you know, you water it, the more it's gonna grow. And it's not about doing, outdoing someone else or outdoing this other person or you know outdoing this business all it is is just making yourself grow every single day and as you grow every single day the rest is going to fall into place because this is about you it's not about nobody else it's not about nobody else's business it's not about who's making more money all it is is about the pursuit of happiness and in this case with atms just making that passive income now that we're on the discussion one question that i get a lot is hey victor you know i walked into an at i walked into a business and they had an atm in there that doesn't matter. Just because you know there's an ATM in there, just because you think there's an ATM in there, no matter what, you still wanna go in there, you still wanna present yourself, you still wanna talk to the business owner, if you possibly can, you still wanna talk to the employees, all right? The reason why you wanna do these things is because um, a lot of times, I've seen it a lot, I actually put ATMs in locations that had ATMs already in there, okay? And the owners told the, uh, the um, ATM owners before me to move their ATM so that way I could put mine in there. That's why you want to ask them because they're not performing well. And when I talk about, I'm not talking about transactions wise. I'm not talking about foot traffic wise. I'm talking about the ATM is running out of money. The owner of the ATM isn't coming in to fill it up on time. All right. That's in situations like that. That's where you come through and you tell the owner, Hey, I own an ATM business. I want to put my ATM in here. I see that your ATM is running out of money all the time. Let me help you out. I'll make your business better. You just talk to them like that, explain what you got going on, explain to them what you're doing, and you're good. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna look at y'all, I'm gonna act like you guys are a business owner that already has an ATM in there, and I'm gonna talk to you guys like I wanna convince you to put my ATM in there versus the one that you already have. So I walk in through the door, I look to my right, oh, there's an ATM, I see the sign, the logo flashing, indicating that there's no more money in there, because if you own an ATM business, you know what that, that sign looks like, you know what that, that red that red lettering across the atm screen looks like um but the moment i see that i'm gonna talk to an employee i'm gonna talk to the business owner i'm like hey sir you know my name is victor i walked into your business right now and i noticed you have an atm in here i also noticed that it's out of cash does it get out of cash often and they're gonna say yeah man i have someone in here um you know they're supposed to be coming to fill it up you know i got this laundry mat that you know we depend on the cash but the guy never comes fills it up it's, it's super frustrating. And then once I hear those words, the, the next thing I do, I usually ask, okay, yeah. So tell me a little bit about it. Did you sign a contract with this individual who owns the ATM? They're gonna say yes or no. And that really doesn't matter because if they're not holding up their part, um, either way, you can get that ATM out of there. You know, they, they, they're there to do a service for that business owner. If they're not performing their duties and, and what they, what's expected of them, 
then again, like I just mentioned, it's an option to get that, that ATM out of there. So you always ask that first just to see how much more difficult it's gonna be, because if they say no, then it's a lot easier, okay? Then I tell them, okay, that's good. So the way I work, you know, um, I could give you some profit sharing if you want. Sometimes they won't even want it. Like I just actually put a, um, an ATM in the laundry room or in the laundry mat, the guy doesn't even want any of the surcharge at all all he just wants is to make sure that the atm is working make sure that his customers are happy and they're able to pull out money when they need it instead of walking across the street where when it's cold or walking across the street um, when it's super hot out they don't want to deal with that they want to make their customers happy so if you could present yourself in a way and let them know look my service is top notch i'm gonna this is what my offer is as far as profit sharing it may not be as high as as what you were dealing with before or what you were receiving before but i can tell you this even though it's a little bit lower you're going to get the best quality service that you can find because i'm gonna make sure this atm is filled up i'm gonna make sure that it's not running out of money i'm gonna make sure it's clean i'm gonna make sure that your customers are happy and i'm gonna make sure that you're happy because your customers are giving you more money because you have an atm that's operating um, the way it should be okay and then you just listen to them hear what their objections are if they say well i don't want it bolted down well, sir, unfortunately, you know, the way I do it, I'm very professional at what I do. You know, we make sure that everything is is, is done right. We definitely want to bolt it, bolt it down for liability purposes. We definitely want to have it bolted uh, for security purposes. We definitely want to have it bolted for insurance policy purposes, you know, things like that. You just explain to them. All right. And as you do it, you're going to get easy. It's going to get easier. You're going to get more smoother uh, with this stuff. I've been doing it a really long time. I've been doing it a lot. So, um, you know, I've talked to a lot of business owners and I've, I've heard it all. I've pretty much seen a lot of the stuff out there. Um, so I have objections or responses to battle their objections. All right. And that's what I do. That's what I want you guys to practice. And then, you know, just do that and you guys will be fine. So going back to the topic of David, the subscriber that I met while he was loading his um, ATM at the barbershop. I talked to him a little bit. I asked him some questions. And one thing that he mentioned was that he paid, when he first started, he paid $400 for a locator. And those of you guys that don't know what a locator is, that's just somebody that um, goes out and finds an ATM location for you. So if I'm like, hey, Tommy, I want you to go find a location for me. That way I can put my ATM, here's $400. That's exactly what David um, did. And I don't recommend that at all. $400 is a lot. And a lot of times these people that you're hiring or these locators that you're looking for, um, to help you they're just trying to find any location they're gonna try to find the first person to say yes especially if you're ignorant on the business and, and you're just getting started and anybody that hears me say the word ignorant don't think that's a bad word all it means is just not knowing like me personally I'm very ignorant on you know mechanical stuff on my car I don't know anything about mechanical stuff and trying to fix engines and all that stuff I'm ignorant all right it's okay to be ignorant you just do your research you learn so anybody that's ignorant is gonna think oh let me pay this dude four hundred dollars he's gonna find me a location it's gonna be easy I'm gonna put my ATM in there it's gonna generate four hundred dollars a month it's not gonna happen don't do it you could offer referral fees just let them know hey you know right now this is what I got going on I want you to go out and find a location for me, but I'm gonna give you $100 if I keep it there past 30 days. You know, that way you're not tying yourself into, you know, um, uh, a, with a person that you're giving them $400 or $100 or whatever it is, and then you're you're putting your ATM there, wasting your time because it's a dud location. So make sure when you when if you do use any of these people, you're always still asking these questions at the business owner to ensure um, that the location is somewhere that you want to put your ATM. So you guys follow him, check him out, learn from him because he's doing the same thing. He's posting videos about his, his experiences on the ATMs. So check that out. And uh, if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you join the Celebrated Victory Squad. All right. Do that right now. Stay up, stay blessed and much love. We'll talk to you guys with another video.